Howdy everybody, and welcome back to the Mega Man tutorial. So last time we set up the boss door so that we can actually get into the boss room. But today we are going to start setting up the boss. We will see how far we can get. Probably all the way to the end because a lot of his code is going to be very familiar based on the previous enemy's designs. And then after that we'll finish up with the uh, weapon git room. So let's get cracking. Oops. Had it backwards there. All right, good. We're all zoomed in, ready to go. So to start us off, we need to create a uh, spawner for our enemy. So over in our, well, let's zoom back out here again. Uh, let's make a couple objects here. So over in our enemy objects underneath the woodman, we're gonna make a object underscore woodman underscore spawner. <clears throat> And we're also going to create obj underscore wood underscore man. So let's pop up on both of those so that we can assign them some sprites. Spawner gets the spawner sprite. Wood man gets the boss's wood man idle. There we go. At least I think it's idle. Yeah, it is idle. All right, good. So now that we got him in place, we're going to put up a spawner here, just like we did with all of our other enemies. And the main reason why we're going to create a spawner here is so that when Mega Man goes into the room, Woodman doesn't appear until after... Uh, Mega Man gets into the boss room. So we are going to put you in here. And we're going to copy pasta our spawner code from another spawn object. So all the same code into there. And uh, if it says no one and the player is there, then create Woodman Intro. Oh, I guess I have to make a Woodman Intro object as well. So create that obj underscore wood underscore man underscore intro. And he's going to be kind of like that Woodman display object that we made for making Woodman show up in the uh, boss monster select screen. Going to give him enemies, bosses, Woodman. We need him jumping. <clears throat> But real quick, let's make sure yeah, uh, you clear the uh, boss instance if there is no one there. But you don't really even need this bit in this uh, spawner because uh, if you die, then the room resets at that point. So should also reset the uh, boss at that point as well. So over into our uh, Woodman intro object. This is going to be the object that drops down from the screen, does a little chest pound for the player, and then we spawn the actual boss in his position. So let's get started with this. We stop all the music that uh, is playing, then we cue the boss battle music. Then we set our input state to none because we don't want the player to be able to move around while the boss is doing his little introduction. Animation image speed is zero, animation speed 0 0.5, direction facing one. We want to make it, we want him facing well one, which is uh, left or uh, one would be up actually if we're looking at dirt four, right? Or if we're looking at X input, that would be right. 
which would be uh, left in this case because his sprite is facing left anyways. So you have to make sure you remember to, that the uh, image X scale is backwards compared to Mega Man. Animation timer is zero, HP is equal to zero. Well, it doesn't really need an HP variable. Did I make him even a uh, enemy? No, he's not. So we could just delete that. He has a fall speed of eight and an X speed of zero and a Y speed of zero. And he has collisions and on ground check. So a lot like the bat, he's just going to fall from the top of the screen and check to see, make sure if he has hit the ground yet. So we're not gonna go complex with uh, anything interesting like states, but we'll give him a little check in the uh, step event. If he has not reached the ground yet, then his X speed is zero. We really don't need this bit as well because he's not gonna be moving left or right. The only reason why it's there is because it's part of the uh, movement script, so you have to have an X speed running around. Apply gravity. Y speed is equal to false speed. And uh, so yeah, just uh, set the Y speed equal to false speed. There's no need for acceleration or anything interesting. Just move him as usual with tile collisions. Don't add object collisions because he doesn't need them. And animation. Uh, we're just checking to see if he's reached the ground yet. Once he reaches the ground, so it's checking in the middle to see at that plus one, he's on the ground. Then once he's on ground, then it sets the on ground variable to true. So once he's on ground, and the player is on the ground, because uh, you'll remember the uh, player comes in and he's sort of floating in midair. And then he falls to the ground at the same time as the boss falls to the ground or something like that. Then we do a crouch for eight second, eight frames, idle for eight frames, chest pound for one second, idle for four frames. And then restore the HP of the boss because you have to fill up the boss. Oh, that would be why he has an HP zero variable. Oops, because we have to do the little restore HP thing that uh, fills up his uh, health bar. So that'll be useful. So we set our sprite index equal to jump for 0.15 seconds. Then if we're crouching and we're at uh, 0.3, so for another 0.15 seconds, or eight frames approximately, then we go to idle. Then uh, we check for idle. And if we're at that point, so we are idle for one second, 1 1.3. Then we give it an image speed of 0 0.5 and start pounding our chest. And then we idle until, well, we don't idle anymore. Now we're doing a chest pound. So when we're chest pounding and we just chest pound until greater than or equal to sec times 1.3. Then we stop and go back to the idle. So, uh, yeah, chest pounds for one second at that point. While it's less than sec times 1.3, then once we're greater than or equal to 1.3, we're in the idle. This will be uh, set every single frame, but it doesn't really matter because it's not really a big uh, deal. I really hate that. I wish I had a better way to uh, make it so it only happens once at that point. Anyways, so else if once our animation timer is greater than uh, sec times of 1.35. So basically, we could have thrown this into, the, uh, into here as well. Oh, oh, yeah, because uh, we go into the idle frame at that point, so that's why we have to check for greater than or equal to 1.35 at that point. Or we could just check for idle and greater than 1.35, but uh, that would have been redundant. 
So if animation timer divided by four is equal to, well, mod four is equal to zero, then our HP approaches 28 by one. So every four frames, increase our HP by one. And play the uh, energy fill sound. If HP is equal to 28, so once we uh, max out our HP, then we restore input to the player. We create at the XY position for this object, the Woodman object, and then we destroy this object. So they seamlessly replace each other at that point. And of course, don't forget to increase your animation timer. Last but not least, we're going to add in a draw event. Strike that. We're going to put in a draw GUI event. And we're just going to draw in that health bar. See black, draw rectangle 38, 20, 45, 76, coordinates on the GUI. And draw the health pips. So this is just code from our player pretty from our player pretty much. Or from the stats object. All right, so now that we got the intro out of the way, the spawner out of the way, we want to start working on our actual woodman object here. So let me pull open the code for him over here. Pop goes those objects, and we're going to start off, actually, delete that. We are going to start off by making him a child of the parent enemy. There we go. Because we want him to inherit all the enemy stuff so that you can shoot him properly. Let's get started by throwing in some states. Woodman has several states. His summon state where he summons leaves from the sky. His shoot state when he throws a leaf uh, shield at you. His jump state where he jumps around. Idle where he just stands there and then dead. So, just like the player, except not. And we're going to throw in all the uh, standard setup code that we use on all of our enemies and the player. Give him an image speed of 0, animation speed of 0.5. Make sure he's facing left and determine his direction facing by... Uh, dirt for right, so if you're at zero, then give him a negative one, which is the opposite of how it works for the player because his sprite is facing the opposite direction of the player. State, set him to the summon state from the start. We're going to have him start by summoning leaves. Animation timer zero, damage eight, that's how much damage he'll do to you when he hits, when he hits you. Uh, damage flash speed, again, HP is 28, a leaf spawns is 0, iframes false, iframe timer, sick times 0 0.5, that's how long he'll be invulnerable after being hit. Manual sprite change, which is false. Ground timer, so this is how long he'll stay on the ground, we have that at negative 1. Jumped equal to false and shoot idle is equal to false those must be used later on as well then we have x fractions inputs acceleration frictions max speeds and all that fun stuff make sure you get a good look and last but not least we have our state our sprite lookup table again we're just going to use a single sprite for each state because we don't have multiple sprites for different directions we just have a, a left and right sprite. Throw in a step event here. And we are going to have a ground check. Just text at his left, uh, at his left bounding box if he's on the ground. 
didn't bother centering if you check because it doesn't really matter in this case. Then our state execution, manual sprite change set to false, execute our event, and if we need the manual sprite change, allow us to. And last but not least, timers. Just like with the player, approach our uh, iframe timer to zero if we, uh, to negative one if we have the opportunity. And once it's equal to zero, set iframes equal to false. So we'll kill all those. And we'll also throw in a damage check. Just like with the other enemy objects. And I think I could have done this better if instead of having a damage check in each one of the enemies, you put it all into the bullet. That might have been a better option. Oh well. There's a lot of different... Uh, there's a whole lot of optimization options that you can do, but they only really matter if you're really targeting for NES uh, hardware, which uh, I don't think anybody is doing anymore. <laughs> so... Anyway, so we have, uh, if we get hit by a buster shot, then play some damage sounds to our iframes and our frame frame timer, remove some HP. I set it up so that he's getting two times damage because I just wanted to kill him faster. And I'll just leave it that way. Instance destroy ID. So destroy the uh, buster shot. And uh, we also take, we oh yeah, we'd have to set in a special case here for your weakness. So if the uh, buster shot is like uh, whatever weakness, uh, Metal Man's blade, then it would detect that it's Metal Man blade and add two times to the damage or something like that. If HP is less than or equal to zero, so once we actually die, set up our animation timer to 0 to 2, 5 create some rotospheres. This is pretty much just like with the player. Oh, yeah. Uh, create instances, object rotosphere, and set it to the destruction flash because the regular rotosphere has the blue, but we want it to be the white because he's an enemy. And set the ID of the creator to the uh, woodman so that it uh, rotates around him. Set the player to invincible. That way, if there's any uh, lingering uh, shots of the from the boss lying around, Mega Man can't be hurt by him. Did I ever put an invincibility into the player? Ah, yes and not invincible. Stop all the audio and play the death sound and put him into the dead state and again take away input from the player so the player can't move around during this animation. Alright good. So how much time do we got going here? We are at 18 minutes, so let's keep going, see how far we can get. I'm aiming for 25 minutes. Let's go and add in a draw event. I'm going to copy the code from the player. And damage flash speed, iframe timer, draw sprite Mega Man damage flash. So. When he takes damage, put a little damage flash thing behind him. Can't remember if he actually had that in the game or not. But uh, probably he did. If uh, interval, then draw self. I did not put in the palette swapping that would go in again with uh, bosses and whatnot if they were damaged. But uh, you can put that in yourself if you feel like coming up with palettes for them. I only put in palette swapping for one option. 
and we're gonna have to draw our uh, HP bar here so just copy this from the uh, intro object and we have a bunch of different states so actually I think we'll cut it off here because not only do we have to uh, do the uh, states for the boss but we also have to put in uh, different uh, his projectiles and stuff so that should be all the code we need for a part two so let's cancel everything and cut this off at 20 minutes thank you everybody for joining me so I'm going to read off some patreon names and I would like to thank a new patreon sponsor so make sure you stick around to hear their name I'd like to thank fragile hearts crude patreon Damien Kenneth Klein John Dickey Vladimir Soldatov and Vito Wang. Vito. At least I think that's how it'd be pronounced if it's Italian or Vito or Veto. I don't know for sure. I don't have a pronunciation guide here. Thank you, everybody, for your support of the NES uh, Game Maker. You will make some nice art happen in the shortcoming future, hopefully. In a month or two, I'm trying to go. I'm going to hire somebody to set up some. Uh, pictures and stuff to make it all look nice next uh, tutorial all right thank you everybody for joining me remember if you have a question or comment leave it behind in the comment section or join us on the discord and until next time good luck with your programming